Han Solo's DL-44 blaster is one of my favorite blasters from Star Wars, I think, and it's definitely one of the more iconic ones. And uh, when I found out that there was a 3D printable kit that you could download all the parts for and assemble yourself, I said, sign me up. So, um, yeah, I downloaded this from the site uh, umagine.com, and this is just a free download. And uh, printed off the pieces. This uh, took quite a while. I don't remember exactly how long, but uh, probably more than a day, maybe, altogether. And when all was said and done, I think I had probably more than 30 pieces, especially if you include ones that you print uh, multiples of, like the little plastic rivets and things. Now, uh, now with 3D printing, uh, you can often get things that are a little bit off dimensionally, so you have to, if you want to put together a multi-part kit like this, you're going to need to massage them a little bit, make some adjustments, maybe do some sanding and filing, and I had to use a Dremel tool uh, in one case to get things to fit properly. But, um, eventually I was able to get them to fit, and I assembled them all with some two-part epoxy glue. And what I ended up with was this. This is the finished blaster. Um, as you can see, I did it all in black, except for the handles, which are a brown resin. And uh, maybe I should have done this in silver on second thought, but uh, yeah, it looks pretty good this way, too. I did do this um, just to save time on sort of the medium print settings in terms of quality. So um, you can see the, the, the print lines in places, and that's not ideal, maybe. Um, if I were to do this again, there's a number of things I would do differently, I think, just in terms of, well, even just choosing on uh, the the orientation of the parts can make a big difference. Like, for this sort of vent thing, well, the first time I tried it, I did it uh, standing up this way, vertically, and they needed, the the slicer program wanted to put all sorts of support materials in between each uh, fin here, and when I printed it out, uh, it was a, kind of a mess because I had to get all those out manually, and it, it just looked crappy. So I just said, "Well, I'll try it again." That that time I printed it this way, so with this facing up. Just I'm just talking about this part now, um, and it printed almost perfectly. So you know you have to sort of get an idea for what works and what doesn't in terms of uh, different parts. Uh, similarly, with this part here, I uh, originally had its uh, print with supports, so it filled up these holes with little support materials, and it turned out that uh, you don't need to do that. Th these holes will print just perfectly without any supports at all, and they'll look ten times better if you don't have to go in there and dig out <laughs> all these support support materials. So, it was a learning experience, for sure. Um, the trigger does move, although it just sort of just sort of hangs there. There was not a lot in terms of um, instructions for this and, you know, how to put it together, so I had to sort of guess on certain things. There may, Maybe there's a better way to do this, I'm not sure. Um, and, you know, I actually found that the instructions, such as they were, were wrong in one place because the person who uploaded the model printed his own and, and showed that as a sort of example, which was very helpful because otherwise I probably wouldn't have been able to figure out how to put this together. But he had um, put this part in backwards so that this little dial-y thing here was at the end. And in fact it should be here. And uh, I, I followed his example and then I, th I thought, boy this looks a little little bit off to me, I'm gonna, I better check, and sure enough it was backwards. So I had to take it off. Luckily the glue hadn't hadn't set yet completely. So I was able to get it off, although I did end up getting the dial itself on backwards. Not that anyone would probably be able to tell that. Um, overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, just as a sort of first attempt at a multi-part print. Um, I'm not sure how I would go about, if I wanted to like make this look exactly like a real blaster and paint it and sand it and everything like that. I think it would be pretty challenging actually because of the way this is um, assembled out of so many very small parts um, with tight tolerances. I, I don't know if I want, I'd want to attempt that at least at this point, but I might want to try 
um, printing it with higher quality settings and and maybe you know changing how I did certain things just to see if I could get it to come out better but overall I'm pretty happy with it and as a matter of fact I have the master replicas version of this right here and I don't know if I can get them both in frame but uh, here they are and you can see it's it's not a bad uh, not a bad match this was the uh, Master Replicas version that they made in 2006. I've had that on display in my office for probably about 10 years. And now I'll have this there too, I guess. <laughs> so, um, in the future I plan to do some more of these kits. And uh, maybe I will do one that's a little bit simpler that I can paint and finish completely to make a, a full prop that might might actually look um, more like a prop and less like something that's been 3D printed. And so until next time, uh, thank you very much for watching.